Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and welcome back to the NFL edition of Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the Sunday and Monday games in the NFL for Week 5. If you like what you see, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Put your football picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my best bets in the NFL, MLB, college football, you can find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. There's also a link in the description. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the games for Week 5 in the NFL. First up, it's the London game between the New York Jets and the Minnesota Vikings. It's going to be 9.30 a.m. Eastern. It's going to be on NFL Network. And right now, the Vikings are a two-and-a-half point favorite. But this line could move based on the injury status, the game time status for Aaron Rodgers. He was placed on the injury report in the middle of the week this week. So we'll have to keep track of that. But honestly, you know, if Rodgers does go, I think it's a great spot for the Jets, just situationally speaking. you got a 4-0 straight up and against the spread Minnesota Vikings team against a Jets team that just got upset by the Denver Broncos. We know a lot of people are going to be looking Minnesota's way, but I think it's just going to give us a really good price in the end. And so far, we're getting a great price with who I still believe is you know, a good Jets team. I, mean, I know they lost last week in ugly fashion against the Broncos. Their offense didn't do much of anything, but that Jets defense was still stellar, holding Denver to under 200 total yards, only 60 passing yards given up. And Bo Nix had a great week the week before against Tampa Bay. He didn't really do much of anything in that game against the Jets. So I still think this is a elite Jets defense. I think the offense will be fine in the end. And I think the Jets win this game in London. So give me the Jets. But like I said, keep track of that Rodgers injury. Next up, the Carolina Panthers and the Chicago Bears. The Bears are a sizable favorite here, more than a field goal. Total is right around 41 points. You know, I thought that the Bears' performance last week while they won the game and covered the spread, offensively speaking, I thought it was a bit of a letdown. I mean, they only put up 264 total yards against the defense that I think is one of the weaker ones in the NFC. And, you know, the week before, we saw 26 first downs, just under 400 total yards. It looked like the Bears' offense was finally getting going. But like I said, you know, last week against the Rams, not their best performance. The defense was fine, but like they got outgained, you know, 322 to 264. I just think that this is too many points. I mean, I know the Panthers have been a tough watch so far, but with Andy Dalton, at quarterback, their offense has no doubt about it been a lot better. They you know, earned that win against the Raiders a couple of weeks ago. They were competitive, at least against the Bengals, putting up 24 points and just under 400 yards of offense yet again. Their offensive line held up pretty well. They ran the football well. That defense did struggle, but I just like I said, I don't think the Bears' offense can make the Panthers pay consistently in this game. It's why we see a rather low total. So I'm going to go with the Carolina Panthers plus the points on the road. Next up, we'll go to the AFC North as the Ravens take on the Bengals. The Bengals are a small road favorite. Total is one of the steeper ones of the week, right around 50 points, 49 and a half points. It makes sense when you look at both of these offenses from week four. They were two of the stronger offenses in the league. The Bengals put up 34 points in their 10-point win over Carolina, and the Ravens in a blowout win over the Bills on Sunday night, 35 to 10. For me, though, the Bengals are still one and three on you know, overall this season, and I think because of the great start for the Ravens, or at least you know the, the most recent performances from Baltimore, uh, the win at Dallas and the win over Buffalo, we're actually getting a really good price with the home team. You know, getting a couple of points here. We'll see if this line moves towards a field goal by the closing number. Obviously, that's a key number, so you know, shop those lines, but. I still think the Bengals, I think they found their game offensively. I mean, 33 points against Washington, 34 last week. They're moving the ball well. They've had 54 first downs in the last two weeks combined. The run game's starting to get going. The passing game's been strong. The offensive line's held up. The question is, can their defense make the necessary stops? I think they can. I, think, I still think it's going to be a higher scoring game. Like we said, a steep total this week. But I, I look for the Bengals to win it outright. I think this is going to be a statement win for them, a win for them to get back in, you know, in, the, in the standings here in the race in that division and, you know, and beyond. So give me the Bengals in this one. I'm going to take them plus the points. Next up, we see another AFC divisional rivalry. And I do think the last game was a little bit better on paper than this one. And we see one of the lower totals of the week in this Dolphins-Patriots game for good reason. When you look at the current state of these teams' offenses, I mean, we know the injuries at the quarterback position have been the big reason for Miami's struggles. They put up 10 points, 3 points, and 12 in their last three games. And their offensive line's not held up too well. They haven't been able to run the football. And like when you're one-dimensional offensively, it's really tough to do much in this league. But it's not to say that the Patriots have been that much better or any better on the other side. I mean, we saw them get crushed against the Jets a couple of weeks ago, 24-3. And then last week, 30-13. to Now, granted, two good defenses and two road games for New England. They return home for this one. But I still, I mean, this was a Patriots offensive line that going into the season 
could have been the weakest one on paper, you know, going into, into the season. And then they suffer all these injuries. It's not any better for New England now. I mean, they've had 13 sacks given up in their last two games. They haven't been able to run the football consistently. And while Jacoby Brissett's a decent veteran, you know, game-managing quarterback, if you have no time in the pocket, I don't care who you are, you're not doing much uh, against opposing defenses in the NFL. So the Patriots' offense has struggled. And then you look at their defense. It hasn't been much better. 400-plus yards given up in the last two games. They you know, got crushed against San Francisco last week. So I think the Dolphins have the better playmakers offensively in this game. They need a better game plan. I mean, the coaching has been really tough for Miami the last couple of weeks. It's just that the play calling has not been the best. We've seen a lot of screen pla- screen passes that have just blown up right away. Um, you know, not, not, not a lot downfield. When you got a guy like Tyree Kill, I know the quarterback play is not as strong, and you know, may, you maybe you don't trust those guys to go downfield enough, but we saw Huntley make a few throws. He even overthrew Hill in one of those spots. So I think he has to be utilized more in a game like this. His speed is still lethal. And I like the Dolphins to find a way to win this game, stop the bleeding, and pick up a must win. Next up, we see the Cleveland Browns taking on the Washington Commanders. We're going to see the Commanders as a field goal favorite at home. Total is right around 43 points. Now, I do think the Commanders are going to be one of the more popular plays on the board in terms of the betting public this se- this week, and I think it makes sense. I mean, the Commanders have had a great offensive showing thus far. Even in their Week 1 loss against Tampa Bay, we saw the signs from Jaden Daniels and that offense. They built on that with a win over the Giants. They put up 38 points against uh, Cincinnati a couple of weeks ago, and then 42 last week at Arizona. But I still think on the other side, this Browns defense is quite underrated. And going into the season, it was considered you know one of the best defenses on paper. Now the one and three start, I think a lot of people are giving up on the defense, but it's still holding teams to under 300 total yards per game. The secondary has been one of the best in football. They've only given up more than 200 passing yards in one of their games this season. So I, I still think this Browns defense can make enough plays in this game to actually give the Browns offense a chance with some decent field position opportunities, potentially some turnovers forced. And, you know, it's been tough to watch Deshaun Watson. We know the quarterback play has struggled. But Nick Chubb is in, is limited in practice this week. We'll see if he gets the start or if he gets any playing time at all for Cleveland in this game. I still think this is a strong offensive line despite their sack numbers so far this season. I think that you know they obviously have to improve those, but on paper, still a strong offensive line. I think the run game gets going a little bit. You're facing one of the weakest defenses that you face this season, and I think that the Browns win this game outright, getting a great price right now on the money line, but I'll take the points just as well, just in case, uh, with Cleveland. Next up, we see the Indianapolis Colts taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars, another divisional rivalry matchup. The Jags are a three-point favorite and total right around 46 points. And this is a series, I mean, this is also a game that you have to keep track of the quarterback injury news as Anthony Richardson left the game early last week. Joe Flacco took over and led the Colts to a victory, but Richardson may be able to return this week, and that's definitely going to move the number in, you know, either way, whether he's a starter or Flacco's a starter. So keep track of that, but... You know, this is a game where the Jaguars have dominated in this series against the spread. They're 14-2-2 in the last 18 ATS in this series. But also the home team has done very well in terms of winning games outright and covering the number in this season series. Uh, you know, last that last year, it was the last game of the, of the season series where the home team lost and failed to cover. But before that, they were on a big-time win streak. I think like an 11-game win streak and a lot of covers to go with it. I think the Jags had their best showing or one of their best showings of the season so far last week in Houston. I think they pick apart a pretty weak Colts defense. So give me the, t- the Jaguars in this one. I'll lay the points. Next up, the Buffalo Bills and the Houston Texans. This one's a game that's kind of gone through zero in terms of the spread often in you know this week so far. The Bills right now are the favorite, but it, I could see it flipping the other way as well. And the total is right around 47 points. And this is a game where you know both teams, these are two, these are considered two of the better teams in the AFC, but both did not have their best showings last week. The Bills got crushed against the Ravens. The Texans, you know, they they won, but they failed to cover against the Jaguars in a game that they were losing, you know, late in that one. Jacksonville put together a strong performance. But for me, the, the concern for the Bills is when you look at their 3-0 start, impressive, you know, a lot of points scored, some couple of blowout wins, but who did the Bills play? The Cardinals week one at home, and you know, and they only won that game by six. The Dolphins on the road, but that was the injury for Tua in that game, so it ended up being ugly game for you know in favor of Buffalo. And then the Jaguars in another primetime game at home. You know, Jacksonville's 0-4 this season. So your first step-up game, your first tough test of the season was at Baltimore, and you got crushed. It was, you know, 427 to 236 in terms of total yards. The Bills only had 12 first downs. They couldn't run the football. Their passing game had its weakest showing by far. 
Uh, they, they had three sacks given up, which was also their worst showing, and the defense couldn't stop the run. Eight yards per carry given up, 271 total rushing yards. Now, a lot of that was that one big run from Derrick Henry, but still, I mean, it was a consistently strong running game from the Ravens in that in that game. And now you go on the road, your second straight road game against another tough team and a great offense in the Texans. You know, the injuries, at, uh, you know, we know Joe Mixon was, was out yet again last week. If he can return, he's, he's he's shown so far. He's played very well with his new team. But even without him, I mean, C.J. Stroud's got really good chemistry with Nico Collins. He's got 18 receptions for already over 330 yards and a touchdown. This passing game for the Texans looks very strong. And the question is, can their defense bounce back from a not-so-great showing? I think it can, especially at home. This is going to be a huge game for the Texans. Their second straight uh, home game while the Bills are on the road yet again. I got to go with Houston this one at a pretty solid price on the money line. Next up, we see the Las Vegas Raiders taking on the Denver Broncos. We see the Broncos as a two and a half point favorite, and the total is one of the lower ones of the week, 35 and a half points. But I don't think it's low enough. I, I still think there's value on the under in this game. This Broncos defense has been outstanding recently. In the last two weeks, 12 sacks earned against the Bucks and the Jets. And now you face a Raiders team that's given up a sack on 10.4% of their passing plays. Their running game has had less than 100 yards in three of their first four games, and they've only had 3.6 yards per carry on the season. I think the Raiders' you know, offense really struggles in this matchup, and a lot of TFLs, they're great for unders. They move the ball behind the line of scrimmage. The clock continues to chew, and it's really a drive killer for the offense. So I, I think the Raiders struggle, but while I don't love this Raiders' defense, or at least I didn't love it going into the season, they had their best showing of the year in, in last week's game against the Browns. Great run defense. They were able to get pressure on the opposing QB and then Watson, and only 240 yards given up in that game. And, you know, Bo Nix had a great game in Tampa Bay a couple of weeks ago. Only had 60 passing yards last game against the Jets. They only had 10 points of offense. So give me the under in this one in the Raiders-Broncos. Next up, we see the Arizona Cardinals taking on the San Francisco 49ers. The Niners are a, the biggest favorite of the week right now, 7.5 points. The total is at 49 points. And this is a game where San Francisco, I think, is a little bit overvalued because of its blowout win against the Patriots last week and the fact that the Cardinals are in the blowout loss against uh, Washington in, in, in the same week. So I think we're actually getting a really good price with the Cardinals, a team that I think has been more competitive than I expected, especially defensively. I thought that this was by far the weakest defense in the league going into the season. And obviously last week they didn't you know, have a great showing, but I still think their defense has been a lot more competitive than expected. We know their offense has plenty of playmakers and, and, and solid quarterback play. They've been able to run the football for over five yards per carry. James Connors had a nice start to the season. So I think the Cardinals are going to be fine offensively in this game and going forward. I think their defense does enough against the Niners team. It's been a little bit inconsistent offensively to start the year. We know they've had some you know, big-time uh, you know, performances like their game against the Jets in, the, in Week 1, but didn't like do much against Minnesota and the Rams in the last couple of weeks. I, I think we see a lower-scoring game. I actually like the under. I think that the total is a little bit too steep. I think the Cardinals cover the number as the dog and potentially earn the outright upset as the road dog. Next up, we see the Green Bay Packers taking on the Los Angeles Rams. We're going to see the Packers as a three-point favorite. The total is at 48 points. Now, last week was you know, a tough watch for the Packers, especially early on uh, in that game against Minnesota, down 28 to nothing at one point, 28 to 7 in halftime. And it was a combination of things. We know that the turnovers were a big part of that game for Jordan Love and the interceptions, but also the missed field goals early on. And, you know, the missed opportunities. But the offense still put up 465 total yards of offense. The defense did struggle, though. And that's why I like the over in this game. You know, I think the Rams, when Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup went down, and it looks like they're going to be down long term, a lot of people wrote off this offense. But they put up 27 points against a good Niners defense a couple of weeks ago. And I also thought that their, their showing against the Bears last week wasn't too bad. I mean, only 18 points on paper. But the turnovers really hurt that team. They still moved the ball well on the ground and had some moments in the passing game. And Matthew Stafford's been able to find some other targets other than you know his favorite target at Cooper Cup to uh, you know to, to beef up this passing game. So I think that the Rams move the ball quite well. I think the Packers do the same, and I think we get over this total. We see a lot of steep totals for Week Five, and this is another one. But I, I like the over. Next up, we see the New York Giants taking on the Seattle Seahawks. We're going to see the Seahawks as a six and a half point favorite. The total is at 43 and a half points. Now, when you just look at the numbers on paper for Seattle's offense in that game last week against Detroit, it looked like they had one of the best showings of all the teams in the league this season. 516 total yards, 38 first downs, and 29 points. But 
There's a reason why you can't just look at the numbers on paper. You have to look at the context of the game and the situation. You know, the Lions were up by multiple scores in that game for a majority of it, and especially in the second half. And I don't want to say they were playing a prevent style of defense in that second half and fourth quarter, but they certainly weren't anywhere near as aggressive defensively as we're used to seeing. So they were giving up you know, a good amount of yards to Seattle late in that game because they didn't really need to do anything other than that. And you know, Seattle, they definitely played well, and they, they made it interesting if that fourth down pass interference call didn't go against them that could have been a different story but I still think that the Seahawks defense was quite you know exposed in that game against Detroit I mean the Lions scored with ease in that one I mean Jared Goff didn't have a single incompletion in that one and I know Daniel Jones is nothing near you know Jared Goff and this Lions offense but they have the extra rest because of the Thursday night game we'll see if Malik Neighbors can go he's definitely a key piece of this Giants offense we've seen thus far but I think the Giants can do enough to cover the spread I think the Seahawks are overvalued in this one give me the points with New York in this game Next up, we see the Dallas Cowboys taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. We're going to see the Steelers as a two and a half point favorite, and the total is at 44 and a half points. You know, the Cowboys defense was already struggling, and now you add to the fact that they have some injuries to worry about. Micah Parsons, you know, the biggest one, he is questionable for this game. I mean, the Cowboys, last week, their run defense definitely improved, but only one sack on that Giants offensive line is definitely a concern for a team that last year, I mean, they had sacks on, you know, 46 sacks and Earned him on 9% of their opponent's passing plays. I think that the Steelers moved the ball quite well in this one. The question is, can the Steelers or can the Cowboys go for, score for score? I mean, their offense has been one-dimensional. I know, you know the, their passing game can definitely be explosive with CeeDee Lamb being one of the best receivers in the league. But the Cowboys have been held to under 100 rushing yards in three straight games. They're only earning 2.8 yards per carry on the ground this season. I, I got to go with the Steelers in this one in a solid price as the home favorite. Next up, we see the New Orleans Saints and the Kansas City Chiefs. The final game for Week 5 in the NFL is your Monday Night Football Contest on ESPN. The Chiefs are a 5.5 point favorite. The total is at 43.5 points. We see a pretty low total in the Chiefs game, and I, I think it's for good reason. I like the under in this one. The Chiefs are 4-0 this season, but it really hasn't been because of the offense. I mean, they've definitely made some plays, and Mahomes is still the best quarterback in the league, but a 5-4 to four touchdown to interception ratio, not great. They've only put up, I mean, 39 points in the last two weeks combined. And now Rashi Rice is out for what looks like it could be the season. He had the most targets by far. He had 29 targets and 24 receptions for the Chiefs. And now he's out. I mean, the run game's not been great, especially with Pacheco out. I think the Chiefs' offense, you know, not great. But, I mean, the defense has been excellent. They've held their last three opponents to under 20 first downs. They held the Chargers to 224 total yards last week. Their run defense, one of the best in the league. On the other side, you know, the Saints, we know that they had a great start to the season offensively, but the last two weeks, pretty subpar. Their defense, though, has been stellar. Their run defense has held their opponents to under 100 rushing yards in three of their first four games. And, you know, you look at last week's game, while they gave up 26 points, we got to remember, one of those touchdowns was on a muffed punt that the Falcons recovered in the end zone. So, you know, their defense was actually better than uh, what the final score may suggest. So give me the under in this game between New Orleans and Kansas City. And that's it. Those are the games for Week 5 in the NFL. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Put your football picks in the comment section below. And again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Ranelli. Good luck.